Welcome everyone and welcome back to Dollar in a Dream. I am Dre Manning. Have you missed me? Because I most definitely have missed you. Lately, as you've seen, a lot of the content has been presented in a pretty uh, cinematic way. I really liked the idea of it. It was kind of different from what a lot of other filmmakers are doing on this YouTube space. So I figured, hey, let me find my own niche, see what works for me and it really works for me. I have a new one coming up, coming out probably after you guys see this video featuring my guy, Burke, uh, Cunning, oh, fuck, I always struggle with his last name. Cunning, Cunning, Cunning. He says his name in a video clip, so <laughs> terrible thing that I don't know how to pronounce his name. He knows how to pronounce mine, but my, my last name's kind of a little more famous, you know, no offense. Anyway, besides the point, a couple of updates. There's gonna be plenty of new content coming from me. I'm gonna drop a couple more new vlogs. I'll be dropping, uh, I'm also gonna be dropping this vlog on the channel that I did about fatherhood. I shot it sometime last year. I'm actually wearing this same hoodie and I'm finally gonna debut it in a three-part series just talking about uh, entering fatherhood. I'm gonna get back into the 90 second uh, tips I know I did one, but it necessarily, it technically wasn't 90 seconds, right? The intro kind of made it feel longer. And then on top of that, the, the facts that I was given ran over, well, the facts, the information that I was given ran over 90 seconds. I gotta revamp that and really lock it down to like that information being 90 seconds, um, just so it fits the, the, branding of it, I guess. I don't know. Whatever. I just want to make sure that everything is copacetic when it comes to the type of content that I'm giving you. If I say I'm going to give you a tip in 90 seconds, I want to make sure it's done in 90 seconds and nothing further than that. I'm writing a web series. It's a 10 episode, 12 episode web series. I'm partnering with some other YouTube content channels to premiere the uh, short films that I'm working on. If you haven't seen the short film that I dropped last week, year one, well, was it last week? The week before. If you haven't seen a short film that I dropped two weeks ago, you can check it out up here or here. I, you know what? It's so hard to know where that card is gonna be at. So the card is up here. Check out the new short film that I released about two weeks ago. It's really dope. It's three minutes of your time and you'll enjoy it um, if you're into um, dramatic, kind of films. Let's talk about something that I've been thinking of, thinking about pretty heavy as of lately. I, aside from doing short films and web series and creating YouTube content, I also shoot music videos. My history with music videos starts as a recording artist. I've done music since I was 14 years old. I still dabble with music here and there, depending on my mood, but my main focus as of late has been filmmaking. I've noticed that there's become this trend as of lately where the artist and the director or the filmmaker or whatever title you're using at this time when it comes to your video production seem to be at odds a lot of the times. There's really no marriage between the artist and the director. It's kind of a, a thing of who's more important. So that's what we're gonna talk about right now. We're gonna talk about who I think is more important when it comes to music videos, the artist or the director. I've noticed as of lately, many directors are kind of ego tripping, but so are artists. So I'm not just gonna blame one without talking about the other, but let's start in one space first. Let's talk about the directors. I remember when I was 11 years old watching my favorite film in the world, which happens to be Juice. Um, and I was just in love with the composition. I was in love with the storytelling. I was in love with everything about that film. Plus, it, it felt like it felt like these characters could be me in some way. You know, they were young black kids from Harlem, um, wilding and running around the streets, doing things that they weren't supposed to be doing as high school students, but they still did it and they still lived young, wild, and free. It was a feeling that I could never shake. And as I got older and I watched more films and I fell in love with Quentin Tarantino and his productions and then uh, finding about Martin Scorsese and, and, and falling in love with his productions and now Ava DuVernay and, 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 um, and Kugler and just loving all of their, 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 their productions and the things that they create or they envision and then they work with their team to create. 
I, I've been, oh, even John Singleton, the work that he's done and the things that he's created, I've told myself when it comes down to me as a filmmaker, these are the things that I want to make sure I always represent and I do it right. Um, but my first step into filmmaking was music videos, shooting music videos for myself and local talent, just so that I can become a, a very well-versed storyteller. I started with a smaller package. I started to study what my predecessors did. It wasn't just a thing of, hey, I get booked for a video, I show on my camera, I shoot whatever you tell me, and I disappear. No, that's a, that's a camera guy. I'm not a camera guy, I'm a director. And as such, what I do is I take your music, I listen to it, I digest it, and I create this vision board, or what you know as is a, um, or what you know as a video treatment. That video treatment I then show to you and, you know, try to convince you, hey, this is the direction you should go visually with your video. I take your advice and your input uh, for the treatment and I see how we can implement it in the overall narrative. Before we come together, we put together this concise package, we go out and we shoot it. What I've noticed lately is many directors don't care to do that treatment. If the artist doesn't have enough uh, clout or recognition, they feel like, nah, man, you're just another artist. I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna shoot this video. I'm gonna take my camera and shake it around and do all this like weird sh because I never listened to your song. So I'm just gonna make make it look so good here that in, in post, everything will look fly. But they give that same treatment to every sing almost every single artist unless the artist is someone that's reputable. That and I, I don't feel that's fair. I don't feel that's fair, especially when this person is someone who's not known, someone who's working a job to pay you that five, six hundred dollars, or even lower, maybe two, three hundred dollars for you to shoot a music video, and you treat them as if they're not important. To be honest, it's fucked up. To treat someone as if they're not important is just telling them, hey, uh, the only thing that's great about you is the fact that you're able to pay me and I'm able to provide for me and mine. There's really no dedication to your craft. You as a craftsman or woman, there's no dedication to it when you don't care enough to put more emphasis into the quality of product that you offer to the artist. So instead of going to a shoot and the only shots you're getting is these shots when you're shaking the shit out of your camera or you're running around in a half circle or a full circle around this talent, you actually sit down and you listen to the music and then you try to create a story. Now don't get me wrong, there's some songs that is just like, there's no story here, let's just go out and um, have fun and we shoot these different angles, almost make it feel like we're shooting in the club. I get that. But that can't be the same approach with every single artist you work with. So many directors have built names and they've built names in, in, in the industry here in New York City and probably all over the United States. And many different artists are saving up money to work with these directors because they have a platform that could possibly get them heard by a rs at record labels or help get them more bookings because people are looking at it and going, oh wow, you've worked with Dre Manning. Dre Manning has worked with this artist, this artist, this artist, and we want to work with you as well. Uh, which has then made directors feel like, hey, I'm more important. Artists. Don't think I'm letting you off the hook either. That's that's what is not gonna happen, right? Now, as an artist, I've always had the, I've always felt whatever it is that I need, I, there's no such thing as someone giving it to me for free. Cause anyone hands you anything for free, it kind of backfires on you 10 times out of 10. There's always gonna be something that fall, makes you fall flat on your face. So you pay for what you need because this is your career. The only person that should be focused on funding your career the most is you. There should never be this notion that, oh, I'm gonna make it or if I make it, you should be fine and everything is cool. Look, let's keep it 100. If there was financial aid for being a recording artist, we'd all apply for it. And nine times out of 10, well, I'm gonna say half the time, most of us would get it. But the reality is there is no financial aid for being an artist. The only financial aid you have is having a nine to five or a sponsor or, 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 or or a rich daddy or mommy. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the only type of financial aid you could possibly have. But in order to find, in order to make your way through any career in life, you need money. I have a friend, she wanted to be a doctor. That's all she knew. Her mom came here from, uh, uh, from Haiti and 
she knew she wanted to be a doctor and she wanted to be, I guess the first in the family to be a doctor. She's had nurses and LPNs and, and uh, home health aides, but I don't think anyone in her family was a doctor, not an American doctor. And she knew she wanted to be that. So she went to school. After she went to, after she graduated, she got a high school diploma, she got a bachelor's, she got a master's, then she went for a PhD. Now, I'm not sure if a lot of you are aware of this, but after you get your bachelor's, you're on your own, buddy. Financial aid is not covering you anymore. Now you have to pay for these things out of your pocket. If you want it, you pay for it and you go for it. And that's what she wanted. She went so hard that nothing was gonna stop her and at the ripe age of 27, she is now a doctor and nothing is gonna stand in her way. And that's, that's, that's that same notion. You should be approaching yourself as an artist, but you feel because you have some recognition and you have some clout and, and, and people are coming to your shows, everything should kind of be handed to you. But that's not reality. When you go to work, if you have a job or even if you're a hustler, whatever it is that you do to make money, if somebody comes to you and say, look, man, I'm gonna be able to do X, Y, and Z in a few years, you just need to let me do this for free or you just need to do this for free, you're gonna look at them like you're crazy. So what is my point? What is the point that I'm trying to get at? Who is more important? Is the director important? Is the recording artist important? Hand and glove, as simple as that. It comes down to being hand and glove. The artist director marriage should be in unison. It should be no one is more important than anyone. You guys are equally important because without one, the other, well, to be honest, if a director is not able to shoot music videos, yes, he has another, he or she has another option to go and shoot films, uh, commercials, things of that nature, right? But if a director's passion is shooting music videos for the rest of their life, you guys kind of meet each other at that crossroad because an artist needs someone who's gonna be able to take their audio vision and turn it into a visual one. And a director needs someone who has great talent that inspires them to create amazing visuals. But when you want to follow trends or you think that uh, because you have this level of recognition, everyone should bow down to what it is that you want them to, things won't work out that way. You got to kind of meet each other at a crossroad. So when looking at who's more important, it's both of you. You both are important. You both need each other in order to create this product that the world can see and appreciate and enjoy and share and, and, and write comments of and meme about. That is why it's both important that you work with a director and you work with an artist that you respect. When that level of respect is present, everything else flows pretty well. You're able to, you're able to convey ideas and messages to each other in a positive and communicative way that the nature of your relationship is fluid, but when it's not, when one feels like, no, well, I have this level of success and you're just working to get there, or they just view you as a person with a camera, or they, you're just viewed as a person I, I'm gonna get paid off of, you're gonna come to this crossroad of dysfunction. And with dysfunction, it lies uh, unpleasantries. And with unpleasantries lies disdain for each other. Why would you want that type of work environment? You gotta, you guys gotta come to a meeting, myself included. The point is, is the final product is a vision from both of us. Neither one of us was more important in these moments. We both were equally important. In order for me to do my job, I need you. And in order for you to uh, have something that's presentable to the masses, you need me. So with this conversation of who's more important, the artist or the director, you're equally important. We need each other. We need to work together and build together. We all have we all have things we all need, um, and we just kind of need to pay it forward. And yeah, I don't know. At this point, I'm kind of just rambling on. The point I'm just trying to make is, if you're hiring a director to do a job, be open-minded, be willing to trust them. If you're being hired to 
director of a music video, keep in mind that you are a director still. You're not a camera guy. See, a camera guy just shows up to a shoot and shoots whatever he's told to shoot, captures whatever images they point to. But a director shows up to a shoot and creates a whole new world around this one concept. What do you want to be? What do you want to be known as? What is your legacy going to be based on? That solely is up to you. Because what do I always tell you guys? At the end of the day, everything that I tell you doesn't matter. Go out there, break boundaries, take chances, take risk. Shoot your shot, man. This is Dollar in a Dream. I am Dre Manning. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. I'll be back in a couple of days with another one.